aducanumab. It's a brand new drug from pharma giant Biogen. It goes by the brand name Aduhelm, and it was just approved by the US Food and Drug Administration. It's the first newly FDA approved Alzheimer's drug in nearly 20 years. But does it work? How much does it cost? Is it the next big hope or is it a big hype? I'm Steve Goldring from simplehormones.com. I help patients and healthcare practitioners with easy to understand patient education resources. I mostly stick to hormone optimization topics, but I also occasionally talk about Alzheimer's prevention. It's kind of a, a pet topic of mine, along with Alzheimer's treatment. That's because one of the key risk factors that makes us more likely to develop Alzheimer's or dementia or cognitive decline is low hormone levels as we age. On June 7th, 2021, the US FDA granted a sort of fast track approval to a new drug called aducanumab. The brand name is Aduhelm and it's made by a company called Biogen. The news of this new drug has exploded in the medical community over just the past few days. It's not all good news though. So I guess if there is any good news, it's that a new drug has come out at all. There's been almost 20 years gap since the FDA, FDA has approved a new drug for Alzheimer's. That drug was called Mamantine. And the brand name is Nemenda. It's one of just a little handful of drugs that's been used in dementia patients. Well, unfortunately, Mamantine doesn't really help all that much with Alzheimer's memory decline. It might be able to slow down the loss of memory a little, but probably not that much and some of the studies sort of indicate that memantine slows memory loss in maybe one out of 10 patients. So it's not that impressive of a drug for Alzheimer's. Memantine was okayed by the FDA in 2003 and there's been absolutely nothing since then. The research on new drugs for Alzheimer's disease has been a dismal failure, at least until now. Well, sorta. Two clinical trials conducted by the pharma giant Biogen over the past several years looked at this drug, Aduhelm. It's called a monoclonal antibody, which is kind of a new class of drugs that have shown promise in a lot of different diseases. The trials called Emerge and Engage were looking for evidence that the drug might slow down the progression of dementia in patients between about 50 and 85 who were already showing signs of cognitive decline. There's something called a primary endpoint. That's sort of the, the question these trials are trying to answer. The endpoint for this trial, and I quote, was change in mean score on the clinical dementia rating scale. So basically these two studies looked at memory scores for patients who took the drug versus patients who got a placebo. The two studies were designed to be practically identical. Each study enrolled about 1,650 patients, give or take, and gave them basically the same amount of the drug. Now there were some differences in doses for some patients, especially for patients who had at least one copy of what's called APOE4. That's a gene that makes it much more likely, although not guaranteed, that you're gonna get Alzheimer's disease. The patients who had the APOE4 gene were given somewhat lower doses than patients without the gene, and that was mainly because the researchers were concerned about some side effects hitting those patients with the gene harder than patients without the gene. Ultimately, the dosing of the drug was changed, adjusted during the trials, so everyone ended up with the same doses in the two different uh, trials and groups. There was a group that received lower doses and a separate group that received higher ones and they're kind of comparing the doses as well. So the trials were actually stopped in 2019 because of something called futility. Futility, as the name would suggest, is all about a judgment that the drug wasn't actually looking like it was gonna work. So why should we have patients continue to use it? There was basically a rule built into the study that stopped it if it didn't achieve certain results which it didn't. So we had these two clinical trials, the same types, the same numbers of patients, the same drug versus placebo, the same everything, basically. The funny thing is, is that one of those trials showed some very slightly positive results, and the other trial showed no effect from the drug. Again, the primary thing researchers were looking for was an improvement in the cognitive scores of the patients that had already started down that path of 
Alzheimer's, and cognitive decline. So kind of a secondary outcome researchers were looking for was beta amyloid plaques. Those are sort of protein clogs and tangles in the brain that seem to be somehow involved in Alzheimer's. At least beta amyloid is found a lot more prominently in patients with Alzheimer's than in patients with healthy brains. These two trials did show that the drug was able to decrease beta amyloid plaques in the brains of patients and they thought that seemed to be helpful. The bad news about that is that several trials have shown reduction in amyloid plaques from the brains of people with Alzheimer's, but decreasing those amyloid plaques doesn't seem to make much difference in those patients' memory. They don't have any type of turnaround, their memory doesn't improve. So the end result of these hu two huge clinical trials was number one, less amyloid plaques in the brains of patients treated with the drug, and number two, a tiny bit of improvement in cognitive scores in one study, but not both. This new drug has been approved by the FDA based on what looks like some fiddling with the data from the studies to show that it really does work, sorta. If it does make a difference for these patients, it doesn't look like it's all that much of a difference. This drug is definitely not the cure for Alzheimer's disease that so many people are desperate for. In fact, it's probably way more hype than hope for the millions of people struggling with caring for an Alzheimer's patient. Not only is this drug not a viable treatment for the disease, it's also about $56,000 for a course of treatment. That sounds like a lot of money down the drain when you realize that Alzheimer's care is already pretty expensive. This just makes it more on the astronomical level. I'm gonna put a link in the description below this video for a detailed analysis of both the drug and those two clinical trials that I mentioned. An independent scientific group called the Institute for Clinical and Economic Review put out a 123 page report that was called Aducanumab for Alzheimer's Disease, Effectiveness and Value. The conclusion of this report, based on the scientific evidence presented from the trials, is that this drug is definitely not worth the price. It's not gonna help Alzheimer's patients. Why the FDA approved it is a bit of a mystery. Well, I take that back. It's maybe not so much of a mystery once you realize how many millions of dollars in user fees the FDA gets from companies just like Biogen. I did a quick search to see how much money Biogen is probably paying to the FDA. I saw a website called Regulatory Affairs Professional Society that says the standard user fee for a company that's asking the FDA to approve a new drug, especially when they're trying to show the drug is safe and effective using clinical data like this one, the starting user fee is $2,875,842. $2.9 million in fees. I'm pretty positive that Biogen is probably paying more than that. The FDA has a vested interest in approving Big Pharma's drugs, whether they help patients or not. Interestingly, Biogen's stock has increased 55% in the past five days. Maybe that's just a coincidence. I don't know. But maybe Big Pharma cares a lot more about the bottom line than they do about actually helping patients with Alzheimer's or their caregivers. At the end of this video, I'm gonna be putting a link to another of my own YouTube videos. This one's about another much smaller but also much more encouraging clinical trial. One that's not likely to make anyone filthy rich, but might actually lead to some real hope for Alzheimer's patients and their families. Dr. Dale Bredesen from UCLA and a team of researchers ran a small trial of a multi-pronged precision wellness approach to Alzheimer's. They weren't trying to find a magic bullet drug that miraculously cures the disease. They weren't all that interested in getting rid of beta amyloid plaques. What they were concerned about was 36 risk factors they've identified that influence whether a patient gets Alzheimer's disease or not. Bredesen and his team looked at eliminating or reducing as many of those risk factors as they possibly could. And the results of that small trial were extremely encouraging. Something like 85% of patients in that trial showed improvement in their cognitive scores. The link's at the end of this video. Well, I mentioned the insane amounts of money involved in the FDA approval of this new drug. 
Well, Dale Bredesen offers a comprehensive Alzheimer's prevention and treatment program through his company, Apollo Health. The treatment program is called Recode and uses what's called the Bredesen Protocol to address all of those 36 risk factors that I mentioned. And Recode consists completely of steps that help you reduce insulin resistance, decrease whole body inflammation, correct nutrient deficiencies, optimize your hormones, eliminate toxins, remedy infections, rehabilitate your brain that may have been damaged by concussions, exercise regularly, sleep seven to eight hours of consistent sleep every night. A single course of aducanumab costs $56,000. That amount would allow you to pay for the Recode program every month for about 62 years. If you're a patient looking for help in optimizing your hormones and staying healthy for the long haul, click the link that says find a provider and let me know where you live. I can't guarantee I know a hormone optimization specialist in your town, but I do know a lot of them all over the US, even a few in Canada and one or two in the UK. If you're a healthcare practitioner and you make it your business to help patients optimize their hormones and keep them healthy for the long haul, join my provider database. That makes it easier for me to connect you with patients that need your help. I'm getting two or three new patient requests every single day, and I have over 2,633 patients on my mailing list looking for a provider just like you. It won't cost you anything, maybe a few minutes of your time, and it just might change someone's life. Thanks so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, click the like and subscribe buttons to get notified whenever I post a new one. We'll talk again soon.